Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you guys something cool about cargo. So if we dive into a terminal, as you guys have seen before, what we've been doing is cargo new and then just some kind of binary. But what this is actually doing by default is when you don't specify this flag here, it's automatically set to bin, which is binary. So if we create something like that, as you guys have seen before, we're going to get this hello world set up with a cargo toml. And it's pretty straightforward. And we saw how we can use other Rust files and all this other stuff. But what about if we did cargo new and instead used lib? And we'll just call it some lib. What does that look like? Well, when you generate a lib, you get a lib RS instead of main. And it comes with test configurations to show you how to write tests in Rust. Now, what is lib? Well, cargo supports binaries and libraries. And when you use cargo new, as you can see by that flag, you can specify either. A lib is designed for you to create SDKs and things of that nature and reusable code that you can share and import into other applications. So think of it like a library that you build once and then you might have like 10 or so applications that are all using that library. You don't want to go into those 10 applications and change the code in each of those things. You'd rather just change it in one location, upload a new library, and then those applications can just increment their version number, etc. So that's what these look like. Now, really quickly, I'm going to take that out for now, but really quickly, I want to mention that when you are developing locally, especially with a library, actually with the binary and a library, you're obviously creating crates like we talked about before. And most of the time when you're importing a crate, it's going to come from a site called crates IO. And it looks like this. This is where all the crates that are public to the Rust community are located. Now there are crates out there that you can use that aren't on here. Like you can get them from GitHub. You can import them from pretty much anywhere that has any kind of crate registry or has the source files ready for download. But this is the public cargo crate registry and you can see in here a ton of stuff that we've used there's rand in here basically i would say most of the stuff you're going to use in your application could be found on here and there's even stuff for crypto and network programming and all these different things so check out crates io when you get a sec but when we're developing locally you can actually use a local library inside your binary which is kind of cool so i'm going to show you guys how to do that so for starters, let's declare a public function here. We'll just call it like, what's up? And these are gonna be pretty simple. I'm just gonna print line, what's up? And then let's also create another Rust file in this library called sumlibfunctions.rs. And we'll add another public function that just says nothing much. And as you can probably guess, we're gonna print nothing much. And now, as we saw before with a binary, it works the same way for importing Rust files. So with lib, we're going to have to have this pubmod sum lib functions. And now that's going to pull in any additional Rust files, which in our case is called sum lib functions, into the main lib rs. And this is going to be the crate root for a library. And so if you had more than one library you wanted to import, like you would just obviously list them all like this. And you can also just declare functions right in here. Now, once you're done building your library and you want to use it in your local binary, there's nothing else that you have to do besides that in a basic sense. In your binary, however, we're used to declaring our dependencies here in Cargo Toml. But like, what do we call this thing? Do we just say like some lib? Well, yeah, but the import statement looks a little bit different here. So instead of just adding like a version or something, instead we're going to go like this. We're going to say path inside of curly brackets. Go back one directory and it's going to be some lib. And now that's enough in our cargo toml of our binary to actually import the local library that we have. An alternative way to write this is you can do this. 
and you can just do dependencies dot sum lib. That's perfectly acceptable too. But we're going to go with this method for now. So save that. And then in your binary, in main, we want to use those functions. So we have to import those. So we're going to use sum lib and we're just going to import all of it. And we're going to use sum lib functions. And we're going to import all that. And then we're just going to run those functions. What's up? Nothing much. And let's go into our binary and do a cargo run. And as you can see, we get our outputs. Beautiful. Now, why did I show you guys this? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, this is how libraries are built in Rust and in Cargo. And any of the stuff that you import in your binary, like in your Cargo Toml, there's a good chance that it's going to be a lib created in Cargo using the same method that we just did. And that's what all of these dependencies are. And I, we talked about crates IO and they can come from GitHub, wherever. But this is how developers do libraries in Rust. And being able to import it locally and stuff like that is really helpful for testing and debugging locally before you push up a new release of your library. So let's uh, look at an example here in practice. This is the Solana source code. If you guys don't know what Solana is, it's a cryptocurrency network designed with proof of stake. And there's a number of different caveats to that. And there's a number of different advantages and disadvantages to it. But in a nutshell, this is a really, really, really fast blockchain. And this is their source code on GitHub. I'll put the link in the description, but it's Solana Labs. And you can see I've got it actually downloaded here and I've opened it with VS Code. And now this thing's a beast, right? Like this is a monster. There's a ton of stuff in here. There's shell scripts, there's all kinds of programs. But if you start peering through it a little, and I encourage you to do so because it's all written in Rust, you can open this SDK folder and we can actually see a lot of stuff in here. And we go to source, what do we find? LibRS. So this is how Solana is using LibRS. And you can see that just like we did, they're pulling in all of these modules and you can see these listed here in the source folder. They're all Rust files. They're all centralized into this library and accessible by importing this stuff. And so the developers at Solana are building all of these different functions and structs and all of this stuff to build and tr even traits and everything we've covered to build out libraries that the Solana blockchain is then going to use in its binaries. So take a look at this. It's pretty cool. But as you can see, like this is what we covered here. And all of this stuff is available to Solana. And then you can see there's some macro declarations and stuff, things we haven't covered yet. And then there's the test. So now you guys know how to build libraries in Rust and in Cargo. And if you even want to experiment with publishing them to either GitHub or to Crates.io, you know, whatever you want to do, um, by all means.